Hey everybody, good morning. I am in Quartzsite, Arizona. I am bumping this video up because of its importance. <laughs> and then we'll get back to other RV stuff, but um, I'm actually going to reach out to some fellow RVers, some full-timers, Class A people. I really, really, really need your help. So I'm going to tell you what's going on, and then I'm going to give you a bunch of information so that you can diagnose it correctly, because if I leave out stuff, I, I tend to get like 500 comments of the same people asking, well, why don't you just do this? And then I have to write to 500 people and say, I can't because of this. So that's why I'm going to be as clear as possible. But uh, let's go back to Flagstaff, Arizona. We left uh, with a full tank of water, 66 gallons of water in there. I know that because the overflow started pouring out and I knew we were totally full of water. We drove through the mountains from about 8,000 feet, went twists and winds, ups and downs, got here, and I had less than a third a tank of water. All, nearly all of my water sloshed and drained and siphoned out on the trip. <laughs> Baffling, right? Um, <laughs> to put that into perspective, this is much different than Yoda because rather than having a fill right here that you put water in and then has a vent right next to it, you can feel the air coming out and when it's full, water will slosh out of that vent. Well, instead, in this Class A, and a lot of Class A's, we simply have a threaded input. This is for my freshwater tank. You thread the hose in there, turn it on. When it's full, I thought that it was going to come out of one overflow vent. And you can see it dripping, you know it's full. It was actually two. I'll show you on the other side. So in this compartment on the other side, this is where the propane's at, and I actually took apart a wall right here so that we can see the water tank which is about four inches from the edge here and goes all the way back past through to the other side. It is a huge 66 gallon water tank. Now, what you'll notice here is on top right here, you have the overflow and vent. Great, it's at the top of the tank, that makes sense. Problem is, it simply immediately goes down and there, you can't see it back there, but it, it drains onto the ground. It never goes up, it just simply goes down. And, and like I said, there are two of them. There's one here on this side, and you won't be able to see it probably, but way back there, it's gonna do the same thing. Go down, there's one on each end. I started looking into it, and sure enough, this is a known problem with a lot of the newer Class A's. They don't have room to do anything else. There's no option, guess what? Because there is a steel floor all the way through here for us to stand on inside the RV. In fact, I've got all of about a half an inch of clearance above the tank. I can kind of put my finger in there, that's steel. So they didn't have an option to bring the vent up higher than the top of the tank. They just said, eh, just put it right on the ground from the top of the tank, which is a terrible idea. And I guess a bunch of people realize that their entire tank can just be emptied in, in a day. I'm like, really? So you can't boondock in today's RVs? Like they've made it, I don't want to say impossible, but hey, if you have an idea, you should be writing something below and giving me an idea because I, okay, there's another vlogger, blogger, I'm sorry, I forgot their name, but they said if you don't have the physical option to bring that vent higher than the tank, which I don't know what to tell you, I, I, the, the slide also, so even if I could drill through the steel floor and bring it out somewhere, the slide comes in and out, so I don't have that option either. The only real option I have is what they were talking about is building a little racetrack of tubing on top of the tank to kind of make it harder for the water to escape while you're driving, right? It's just gonna loop it back and forth and come back on the top of the tank and then it's still gonna vent and eventually that's gonna fill up with water when you're filling your tank and come out the out wherever you put the out. Oh, or you can build the opposite of a, of a P-trap and you can reroute that vent right there to the top of the tank, go up a couple feet and then just turn around and come back down and pipe back into where it's out. Like I said, I got a steel floor right there with half an inch clearance on top. So, and why are there two? <laughs> They're both doing the same dumb thing on both ends. Why do I need two of those? I have no, maybe if you're parked this way, fill in, and then this way the other day. Ah, absolutely frustrating. So at this point right now, I can't cap them. So don't recommend that. You will rupture your tank. That tank needs 
airflow constantly, whether you're parked or you're driving, you cannot just put an inline valve and say, nope, don't wanna lose my, you cannot do that. It absolutely has to be there. If there was a way to put in a, a, a one or two way vent, you know, and just allow air to come and go as it pleases, that won't work either. Because like I said, my input to fill the tank is threaded. I need a way for water to escape when it's full. Otherwise I will never know when it's full. So this system of venting the air and water through the top of the tank must be there for this entire system to work. The problem is I can't keep the water in the tank as I go from place to place. And that is baffling to me. So. I know some of you guys have run into this problem. I know you've made fixes. I'm guessing you've made a couple of the fixes that I've already mentioned are possible, but do you have any advice for us in this circumstance? Please let me know below because I, I'm usually pretty good at making some fixes and changes that I have to. This one has me absolutely baffled. I did kind of think about capping the one that was here and maybe that would help not lose as much of the water, but you know, you start going over some of these bumps and you can actually turn your water tank into a siphon effect where once it goes out that, it just keeps collecting the water as you're going uphill and just draining your water everywhere. Urgh, so frustrating. Uh, let me see, just trying to cover all of my bases. So I'm not talking about these three vents right here. This one back here will empty the fresh water tank. There's a valve on that, and this is cold and hot water. I'm not talking about those, okay? I'm talking about this half inch PEX right here, which will empty it if it gets too full on this side. And there's another one just like it on the other side. Now the easiest solution for most people, which I wish I could do, would just be to reroute that vent higher than the tank or loop it somehow and I don't have that option so it's either I bought the wrong RV for boondocking or we have just got to find a way to get that vent up somewhere higher um so until we figure that out we're gonna keep working on this solar project but uh we basically can't carry any water anywhere we go right now. And uh, please let me know what you guys have. If you have any videos to links or if you wanna show me something, make a private video on YouTube unlisted and give me the link. Um, love to hear from you guys. Otherwise, uh, I'm gonna battle over this in my head for a little bit longer. And by now you know I'm doing solar here in the desert with RV Prepper Wayne. So uh, back to normally scheduled programming here in a couple days.